my family's in South Wales. Um, antibiotic loaded acrylic cement um, is used a lot. I think we need, I just wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about this and to be clear of the situations in which we use it. Um, and there really are two. Um, uh, oh yeah, uh, someone's saying, where did the numbers come from? Which numbers do you mean? The, the synovial analysis, yeah, that's really from the research at Rothman, um, from Jay, Jay Parvizi. Does that answer your question? Do I tick in? Got rid of that. Uh, <laughs> uh, what? All right, which one? Um, right. This one? Uh, that came from the research at uh, Rothman. Uh, this is the acute, the, the chronic, uh, uh, chronic infection. Yeah, and, that, and that's that's accepted. Yeah, it is very specific. <laughs> um, so, uh, anybody? <laughs> no worries. <laughs> anybody loaded acrylic cement? Um, Antibiotics are delivered in cement in a prophylactic fashion, and this is a low dose. So, uh, simplex T, for example, CMW with with genomycin. These 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 are uh, 0.5 to 1 gram of antibody uh, per 40 grams of cement. Um, uh, the other area that antibody loaded cement is used is uh, in the treatment of infections. In this case, it's a much higher dose. And for beads and spaces, we use uh, more than 3.6 <coughs> grams, which is a lot more than what a lot of people put in, uh, with every bag of cement, 40 milligrams, 40 grams of cement. And the, other, the second area in the treatment of cement is really is cementing an implant after treatment of a previous, so the second stage reimplantation using antibiotic cement um, at reimplantation. I tend to only be doing that um, for revision knees, um, for hips. We, we but in this case, uh, more than 3.6 grams of antibody per, per bag of cement. Um, and you can't get that unless you add the cement yourself. It's been my experience. I'm not, not aware of any of the cements that have that amount of, that, that amount of antibody. These are the common ones. This is the ones that are approved by the FDA, but they have a half to one gram of uh, antibody, either genomycin or tobramycin within them. So be aware of how much antibody is in the cement you're using. Um, you're using. The elution of antibiotics from methyl methacrylate varies, and it varies um, from uh, the cement to cement, the different type of cement, how it's mixed. Um, and how, essentially how much surface area is exposed um, and uh, that's affected by the way you mix it. Um, it's opposite to fixation of implants. You want to make it as porous as possible so that the antibiotic uh, uh, can elute. Um, it does vary between the different types of antibiotics so you need to look up and be aware of what you can add to uh, cement. Um, and uh, you can't add, there are some that are thermally stable and you can't add them. And uh, the, the elution increases if you add two antibiotics. Um, it's unclear to me why that might be, and it may just simply be you're increasing the volume of powder mixed in and therefore it's more porous. Um, uh, this is for treatment. 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 Yeah. No, you really you, all the all these all these things that volume is um, um, well. As I said, I don't use it except for revision knees. <coughs> but you'd be worried about weakening the cement. Yeah, yeah. Um, but if you're going to use it for treatment and even for second stage, if that's what you should be doing, right. um, uh, that's the that's the quantities you should be using. Yeah, 
and it does weaken the cement. Make sense? Yeah, yeah. Because I thought, because yeah. uh, well, I, I think if you add it any more than what the, the manufacturers put there, you weaken anything you add weakens it. Um, so tailor the antibiotic to the organism that you've grown. Um, and um, so, the, and these are the common organisms that uh, are grown in the hip and knee, and you, sh you should all be aware of those. But um, it really is important to just not use the genomycin or tobramycin that's available at Crystal Antins. These days, I find we're act adding. Uh, Uh, so, uh, antibiotic loaded uh, bone cement uh, in the treatment of uh, prosthetic joint infections is used as a, a source of antibiotic uh, in the local area, but also as a void filler, um, having removed implants, uh, and also as a way of maintaining joint function. Um, and this is the prophylact. And uh, I won't go through all the ways of mixing cement because you know that, but um, I. Um, find a, the nozzle of a, uh, a striker cement gun useful to make a rod that uh, we, we, we implant. So we just, uh, one, one bag of cement fills the nozzle of a uh, striker gun um, and, that, and use that as a, as a deeper source inside the femur. Patients where you can't really use a uh, prostolate for various reasons. Uh, this is an, just an example of um, construction after, uh, uh, after how, how this rod is used. And uh, we let the patients wait there on... Uh, um, you're all familiar, I would imagine, with the injectable moulds. And um, uh, they do have... Uh, they can be useful. I don't use them all the time. The, the early generation of these moulds were uh, the, the implants broke, you know, the, uh, which didn't really bother me, but it hurt, and uh, the patients don't like to. And they had a pretty high dislocation rate, uh, so it was actually simpler not to use uh, the prostolac um, uh, in very uh, bone deficient or soft tissue deficient situations, but to use um, a rod. Uh, but the um, Many of the uh, prostolacs have been improved so that uh, they've been strengthened. This one's been strengthened with metallic um, uh, core, if you like, and you eject around it. Have you all seen this one? The, yeah. But there's a number. Of, no, oh, this is the Biomet one, I think. Uh, there's a number of them around. Uh, and again, uh, add, add the appropriate antibiotic. Um, the knee ones. Similarly, um, I, I'd much prefer to make my own, own um, cross-lac, uh, adding the antibiotic that's appropriate for the organisms that have already, already grown. Uh, it also presupposes that you know what the organism is. Um, uh, um, I also use calcium sulfate pellets. Um, I'm not sure if, if you're all familiar with this, but the, the uh, osteo set, um, when it dissolves, the antibiotic dilute from that and uh, uh, add uh, antibiotic. It's a common one again, vancomycin, but add a lot more antibiotics, types of antibiotics to uh, calcium sulfate than you can to methyl methacrylate. All of penicillins can be added, cephalosporins can be added. Um, use those beads as uh, void fillers, and uh, I use them almost. So the aim um, of treatment of deep infection is to eradicate infection, first of all, but then to restore function. And um, we're all familiar with the treatment protocols. Firstly, uh, um, the retention of implant uh, by one or more debridement, use of uh, one or more antibiotics, retaining the implant or performing minor exchanges to allow um, a more adequate uh, uh, debridement. Um, you need to use bioactive, biofilm active antibiotics and um, 
is guided by the microbiology of infectious diseases uh, specialist, but generally that involves uh, involves rifampicin or fluoxetine, uh, uh, which have better penetration into the biofilm. Then the more common two-stage uh, uh, re-implantation, removal of implants, uh, course of antibiotics with implants out, and then uh, uh, re-implantation, um, or what's less commonly a one-stage exchange. Now, uh, what about this uh, ret retaining the implants? Um, there, there is um, a lot of conflicting literature on this if you look at it. Um, this paper, uh, I think it was from Spain, uh, they found that the conservative uh, surgical treatment, that is retention of implants in an acute hematogenous uh, joint infection, uh, had a higher risk, uh, risk of failure. Um, recommended quite strongly against it. Now this is quite recent, this is just last year. Um, and uh, uh, there was a 30% failure rate and the implant had to be removed. Uh, another study that came from, uh, from Spain. Uh, infection, uh, incision and drainage of uh, deep infection. Uh, in this reasonably large number uh, reported at the Hip Society this year, uh, on its own, um, Retention of prosthesis with antibiotic had a 66% failure rate, and they recommended very strongly uh, against uh, retention of implants. On the other side, uh, there are publications from uh, St Vincent's in Melbourne and, and other centres where um, there's a much higher uh, success rate in retention of implants, and this this one. Uh, that Chris of Bolton's uh, published, and this was in treatment of staph uh, deep infection with debridement, uh, retention of implants, and then oral rifampicin and fusidic acid. So this is biofilm active antibiotic. Small number of patients. Um, there was quite a range in the uh, presentations. Uh, so the, the mean duration of symptoms was 16 days, so but up to 75 days. So it's certainly not all acute, um, but the, the cumulative risk of failure at one year was a bit over uh, 10 percent, so 11 percent. They're reasonable results, and their conclusion was that debridement without prosthesis removal, uh, in combination with rifampicin and fusidic acid, uh, was effective and should be considered for patients with early staph uh, joint infection, including those with infections involving fluoroquinolone resistant organisms. Um, uh, Dan Berry at the Hip Society this year uh, looked at the Mayo Clinic uh, experience with debridement and retention of implants and suppression uh, in, in a very specific group, early post-op and acute hematogenous infections over an eight year period. They had 61 hips. There was a 15 percent recurrent infection rate. Um, and they found that uh, both the acute and, and acute post-op and the later presenting hematogenous acute infections were equal in their uh, uh, recurrent rate. Uh, and um, there was um, a 0% recurrence rate after any after placement. So uh, this is, these are patients who had acute infections uh, after their initial uh, hemiarthroplasty for uh, pregnancy. In, in, interestingly, 80% um, of the patients in this group remained on long 